Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us for yet another edition of Now Faith. And I do pray and hope that you will find inspiration and comfort from God's Word during the next half hour. As a pastor, I know the challenges and frustrations that people face each day. And I know that our faith is tested each and every day. And sometimes the things of the world just seem to flood our souls. I want to tell you that it's in those times where we need to throw ourselves into the arms of God and let His grace and favor carry us through. Don't rely on your ability, but always look to Jesus who lives on the inside of you. And Jesus will provide you with wisdom and strength for every occasion. Hallelujah. I've just been preaching recently on a series at the Jesus Dome entitled, There's Always Room for More. And I want to encourage you because there's three principles from this scripture that we will find. Number one, that God wants to fill everything with himself. Number two, whatever you give to God, he will fill. And number three, there is always room for more. Let's join the congregation right now at the Jesus Stone. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome all of those that are watching by way of FBM. God bless you. Welcome to the Durban Christian Center right here in Durban, the Jesus Dome. And we believe it is the place where miracles take place. And I don't know what miracle you're trusting God for, but we do believe that with God, all things are possible. Can you say amen? If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the Gospel of Luke chapter 14. We'll begin to read. And he, Jesus, said to him, a certain man gave a great supper and invited many. How many people did he invite? Many. He invited how many? Many. And sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, come for all things by the end of the year will be ready. By about this time next year will be ready. Come for all things are now ready. But they with all one accord began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must go and see it. I ask you to have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I'm going to test them. I ask you to have me excused. And still another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and reported these things to his master. And the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly. Go out how? Go out how, family of God? Go out quickly. Enter the streets and lanes of the city and bring in here the poor and the maimed and the lame and the blind. And verse 22 says, And the servant said, Master, it is done as you commanded, and still there is room. Then the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them. And what? And what? And compel them to come in that my house may be filled. For I say to you that none of these men who were invited shall taste my supper. I want to speak to you today on room for more. There is room for more. As we look at this scripture Family, I want you to understand there are some things that I want to just tell you about God. First of all, that God wants to fill everything with himself. The second thing that I want you to know is that whatever you give to God, he will fill. Let me give you some examples. When Jesus came to the wedding of Cana, you remember the story? They had wine at the wedding, but then a problem came and they ran out of wine. And Jesus said in John 2 verse 7... Fill the water pots with water. 
And they filled them to the brim. They presented the water pots to Jesus, and they filled them to the brim with water. And when the water pots were filled with water, Jesus turned the water into wine. Because whatever you give him, he will fill. If you look at the original mandate that God spoke to Adam and Eve in the garden, Genesis 1 and 28, then God blessed them and God said, be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. Fill the earth with what? Fill the earth with God, man. Because Adam was uh, intimate with God. He was fellowshipping with God in that garden. And God said, listen, I want you to be fruitful. I want you to multiply. And I want you to fill the earth. Fill the earth with my presence. Fill the earth with my faith. Fill the earth with my anointing. Fill the earth with my glory. Fill the earth with my love. Fill the earth with my peace. Hello. Fill the earth with my righteousness. Can you say praise the Lord? And then when the flood came, Noah's, uh, God spoke exactly the same. He just reiterated that to Noah in Genesis 9 and 1. He said these words. Then God blessed Noah's son and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Why? Because God desires to fill everything with himself. And whatever you give to God, he will fill. The purpose of the cross the purpose of Jesus dying on the cross and being placed in that tomb and then going into the lowest parts of hell was so that he could take the keys back from the devil, the keys of hell, death, hell, and the grave. And when he ascended on high, hallelujah, it was so that he could now say, whatever you give to me, I will fill. Hallelujah. He conquered poverty. He conquered sickness. Come on. So when you bring him your sick body and you give him your sick body, he will fill your sick body with healing because that is what he did on the cross, that he might fill all things. That's what he did. He vanquished. He destroyed death, hell, and the grave. He destroyed the power of, of sickness. He destroyed the power of poverty. He destroyed the power of depression. He destroyed the power of anger. He destroyed the power of, 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 of hatred. So that what? So that now whatever we give him, he is able to fill. Hallelujah. Praise God in this place. My goodness. On the day of Pentecost, the Bible says, Acts 2, verse 1, they were up in that upper room, and when the day of Pentecost had fully come, suddenly there was a sound as of a mighty rushing wind, and the wind filled the whole house where they were staying. God was so intent on reaching that group of people that he filled that whole place. Every part of that room, every part of that dwelling place was filled with his presence. And they were in that room and they were filled with all of God. Can you say amen? That's what verse 4 says. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Ephesians 5 and verse 18 says, Do not be drunk with wine wherein is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. God wants to fill everything with Himself. Hallelujah. Wants to fill your mind, wants to fill your marriage, wants to fill your business. Everything that you give to God, He will fill. Can you say praise the Lord? Now, look at Colossians 1 and 17 because it says something quite interesting here. Verse 17, and he is before all things and in him all things consist. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. And in all things, that in all things he may have the preeminence. Now verse 19, for it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell. Jesus wants to fill everything with himself because he is the fullness of God. As a matter of fact, Colossians 2 and 9 tells us that Jesus in him dwells all the Godhead bodily. The fullness of the Godhead dwells in Jesus. Hallelujah. All of the Godhead bodily is found in Jesus. 
In other words, and, and okay, let's take this a bit further. If you look at Ephesians 1 and 22, it says, And he put all things under his feet, Ephesians 1, 22, and gave him to be head over all things to the church, the church, which is his body, right? The fullness of him who fills all in all. In other words, when I look at the body of Christ, I see the expression of the fullness of God. My goodness, isn't that wonderful? When we come together and we represent the body of Christ, His bride, the church, we are the fullness of God, the fullness of Jesus. Hallelujah. How do we become the fullness of Jesus? Because we get to enjoy the riches of Christ. This is what the, uh, the, uh, Paul writes in Ephesians 3 and 8. He says, to me, who am less than the least of all the saints, this grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. So let me try and break it down for us. If I have all my vegetables and I eat, Eat my carrots and my spinach. If you eat everything that's green, you will be clean inside. It's a good cleansing, all right? But all the vegetables and all the carrots and all the spinach, uh, I, I, if I partake of that, what happens? I become the fullness of what I have enjoyed. In other words, what I'm saying is when I eat the carrots and I eat the spinach and I eat all my vegetables, then I reflect health. My hair will be shiny. My skin will be great. My breath will be wonderful. My muscles will be rippling. I am the fullness of the expression of the riches that I have eaten. The riches that I've eaten are the carrots and the spinach and all the green leafy stuff. Can you see what I'm trying to say? So when we get to enjoy the riches of Christ, we become the expression of His fullness. Hallelujah. And that is the reason why Jesus wants to fill everything with Himself. Can you say praise the Lord? Now, it's impossible to speak about this parable, and we're, you know, just getting into the beginnings of this parable. But it's impossible to speak about this parable and to speak about the fact that there was always room for more without talking about faith. Because faith is a phenomenal thing. Faith is a powerful thing that you and I need Amen. Can you say something in this place? So we understand that the kingdom of God is always advancing. It's always moving forward. It's an ever-increasing, ever-expanding kingdom. And Isaiah 9 verse 7 says, Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. Of the increase. Bump your neighbor and say, there's always room for more. There's always room for more because his kingdom is always increasing. If his kingdom is always increasing, there is always room for more. And whatever you give to God, he will fill. And God desires to fill everything with himself. Those are the three principles I'm trying to teach you this morning. Number one, that God wants to fill everything with himself, including you and I including your bank balance. Number two, that whatever you give to God, He will fill. And number three, there is always room for more. Now, this is where the principle of faith comes in because that's, you know, faith. If you've got faith on the inside of you, faith will always be pushing you into the more that God has for us. How many of you would say there's always more of God? I could always do with more of God in my life, Right? Now, the funny thing about faith is that faith will defy logic. It will defy intellect. 
And, you know, I'm not against education, and, and, and thank God for intellect, and thank God that we know some stuff. We, we, we know some stuff, right? But how many of you know that faith is greater than our intellect? Faith is greater than logic. Faith is greater than the material and the physical world. Faith will defy the money world. Faith will defy the sense world. And the amazing thing about faith, family, is that you can stand there empty-handed with nothing in your hand, nothing in your bank balance, nothing in your pantry, nobody standing alongside you, encouraging you, nothing but only the Word of God. If you just have a Word that's in your heart and in your mouth and you speak that Word, you can change the world just with the Word of faith that you speak. That's what's so amazing about faith. That's why I love so faith so much. Because it's not sophisticated and highfalutin. It is just simply believing and trusting God at His Word. If God says it, that I believe it, that settles it. And let my faith do the working. Let my faith do the believing in God's Word. Can you say praise the Lord? Now Hebrews 11 and 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please Him. Do you notice that it didn't say, but without faith, it's difficult? You can. It's, it, it's can't. You, you, it's possible, but it's going to be difficult. Is that what it says? No, it says that without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Impossible means impossible. And if we want to please God, what is it that i got to have? i got to have faith. I've got to work on bringing faith on the inside of me because it says without faith, it is impossible to please him. And then it goes on. For he who comes to God or she who comes to God must believe, must believe. Can I tell you that your believing is one of the greatest assets that you possess? And the people of God said, I thought I'd get a bigger response. Your believing is the greatest asset that you could ever imagine that you possess. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Why do you say that? I, I say that because when everybody else said it's finished, when the doctor said that there's nothing more that they could do for you, and your bank manager phoned you and, and pulled the finance, the plug on your finance, and when everybody wrote you off, you still have the ability on the inside of you to trust God and believe God and say, I am going to stand on God's word. Hallelujah. When Jesus came down the mountain and they had that father who had that son who was demonized, they couldn't do anything for that little boy. And when Jesus gets to the father, the father says to Jesus in verse 22 of Mark 9, he says, he, uh, he says listen, uh, often he's thrown this little boy into the fire, this demon, this problem that he has, often throws my son into the fire and into the water to destroy him. He says, but if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible. The father said, if you can do anything. Jesus said, my friend, the problem is not with me. I can do anything. I can do all things. The problem is, can you believe? Do you have the faith to believe God? Do you have the faith to believe God whilst you're in the midst of a storm, whilst you are sitting there in the doctor's rooms and they have shown you that x-ray? Do you have the faith to believe that with God all things are possible? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. See, that's the difference, isn't it? That's the difference. A lot of us... When we speak about faith, we are listening almost with like a double mind because it's the faith of somebody else that has worked for you. But you've got to get to that place where faith begins to work for you. In other words, what I'm saying is all of us have got to come to a place in our walk with God where our faith must be personalized. Hallelujah. 
where it's not because somebody smiled at you and somebody patted you on the back and somebody opened the door and somebody lifted you up and somebody gave you a ride and somebody gave you 10 rand. It's because of the faith on the inside of you. And you have a deep conviction and knowing that you know, that you know, that you know. I don't care what people said. I don't care what the economy is doing. But I have a word on the inside of me. And that word is in my heart and in my mouth. It is the word of faith that I speak. And if I have faith as small as a mustard seed, I can speak to my mountain. And my mountain will be removed. See, that faith has got to be personalized. It's got to be something that's working on the inside of you. And it is that kind of a faith that will always be driving you to understanding that there is always room for more. I don't mean driving in the, in the bad sense. But you know what I'm talking about. Because there is momentum in the kingdom of God. Everything is increasing. We read it to you. And so faith, faith on the inside of you is what pushes you every day into the more of God. The Bible says that out of your innermost belly shall flow rivers, shall flow, shall flow. Flow means there is movement. And it is faith that creates that movement which ultimately becomes momentum on the inside of you. If there is no flow, you become like a river that stops flowing. And now you become a dam. And it's now this stagnant piece of water that now breeds all kinds of insects and diseases. And it becomes a health hazard. But if that water begins to flow, hallelujah, it means that while you are advancing in God and faith is rising on the inside, side of you, then it means that anything that's not of God is flushed out of your system. Hallelujah. Bad thinking is flushed out of your system. Bad attitudes are flushed out of your system. Why? Because you are hearing and you are hearing the Word of God and you are hearing and hearing the Word of God. And when you hear the Word of God, faith is rising on the inside of you and it's a faith that brings about a personal conviction that gets you to believe that all things are possible with God. Can you say praise the Lord? Lift your hands in this place right now and say, Father, I thank you for your word that has come to me. You said man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, every word. And today I receive this word. And as I receive this word, faith has risen on the inside of me. I am a believer and not a doubter. I am a child of faith and I have the spirit of faith. And my faith is working on the inside of me to believe you that there is always room for more. That you desire to fill everything with yourself. Fill my mind. Fill my heart. Fill my body. Fill my finances every area of my life because whatever I give to you, you will fill. And my faith is such that it believes that with God, all things, all things, all things are possible and that there is always room for more. Always room for more. I receive it in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. I hope that you were blessed and encouraged by that word. But before we go, I'd like to pray for you. Right now, as you're watching, you know that you're away from God and your life is at sixes and sevens with Him. You have no peace. Perhaps there's things that have happened that you're not too proud of. You're perhaps a little bit embarrassed right now and ashamed of some of the things that you've done and said. But friend, I want to tell you, God's love reaches you right now. Right now, His love comes to you, and you have a choice. You can either welcome His love, embrace His love, or you can reject His love. But I do believe that you have the faith today to receive the love of God. As you receive that love, you will receive God's forgiveness. And I tell you, it's awesome when we receive the forgiveness of God. 
So I'd like to pray for you. I know that you're ready. Right where you are, would you bow your heads and just pray the simple prayer? Would you say after me, Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. Just as I am with all of my faults, all of my failures, and all of my sin. And I ask you for forgiveness. Today, I turn my back on sin and I renounce the devil and all of his works. But you, Lord Jesus, with my heart, I believe, and with my mouth, I confess that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Thank you for eternal life that I now receive and the forgiveness of all of my sins. It is your blood that cleanses me and washes me. And I'll never be the same from tonight, from today, from this very moment. I belong to you and you belong to me in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, praise God. I'm so glad you prayed that prayer. And if you did, we would so love to hear from you. The details are appearing right now at the bottom of your screen. Be sure to write us. Let us know what God has done. If you would require prayer as well in whatever area of your life, we would be more than happy to pray for you. Until next time, God bless you. Goodbye. And remember that with God, all things are possible. Bye-bye. Darkness. So much darkness. How can light ever come into my darkness? Where is my hope? Who will see my hope? I need a miracle. Take my heaviness. Take it. I believe. I am healed. Miracle. Durban Christian Center.